Now let's turn our attention to the scientific method in economics. Robin's definition of economics is economics is a science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses. It says economics is a science. Now, this is the subject matter of several videos on the course, um, but there's always room for one more. So here it is. Neoclassical economics is the type of economics that we're going to be studying, and it contrasts with different types, with uh, the Austrian tradition in economics, uh, with Marxian economics, with all sorts of other traditions in economics. It's the, the more mathematical one and the, more, the one that is most widely uh, studied, I suppose, particularly in the West. And here we're going to look at economics as a science. Well, neoclassical economics uses mathematical techniques to analyze economic relationships. So, for example, uh, I might say um, the price is a function of the demand function. Uh, the demand function is... I'm using the word function, please note. That is a mathematical term. Um, I may say something is linear or curvy linear. I may say it's... Um, something else is a function of that again and I'm using mathematical terms to describe economic relationships and that's very controversial a lot of people disagree but we can deal with that later and I think we can all have a lot of sympathy for what they're saying as well um, sometimes we force mathematics into places where perhaps mathematics shouldn't be but nonetheless Let's let's continue with this vein, because this is the orthodoxy. This is the way economics is seen at universities throughout the world. So we use mathematical techniques, and it attempts to use the scientific method. Now let's look at the scientific method. Well, simply we postulate a relationship between two variables. We say oh, something depends on something else. So the demand for bread depends on the price of bread. There are two variables. There is the bread, that's, that's the, the object of, of this, and there is the, the price. So we have two, two variables here, the quantity of bread and the price. So we postulate a relationship between the two variables. Then we collect some data. We need to see if, if the relationship is actually true. We collect the data to see what does the data suggest. Then we analyse the data to determine the relationship. Is there a relationship between the price of bread and the quantity of bread purchased? If we have that data, we should be able to analyse the data and determine the relationship. And if we do, that process leads to generalisations. Um, you could argue it shouldn't lead to general generalizations, but we invariably do generalize. So if we find, for example, uh, as the price of bread increases, less bread is sold, we tend to generalize that and say there's an inverse relationship between the price of bread and the quantity purchased. But this is how we, we move in the economic world. Now, continue with the scientific method. Take an example. Look at this picture. It may not be very clear, come to think about it, but um, it's just, um, I think it's a warren of rabbits, isn't it? It's a few rabbits sitting there. And we, we can look at all of these rabbits and say, well, what have they got in common other than being a rabbit? Well, they're all white rabbits. Okay. Now, we could go along and say after that that all rabbits are white because that's what we've seen. Now, unless we have to assume here we haven't seen any other rabbits in our lives, we just have seen this 
set of rabbits and they're all white rabbits so we say all rabbits are white that's a brown rabbit I just said all rabbits are white and now we've got a brown rabbit therefore we can't say all rabbits are white we have to say some rabbits are white because it's not true that all rabbits are white but some are some are brown Bear that in mind. Now, the deductive method. We're going to deduce here. We say every time the price of petrol rises, less petrol is sold. Where did I get that? Well, I don't have to get it anywhere. I could have just made it up. That's quite acceptable. That's a hypothesis that I'm going to test. I might have based it on my observations, or I may have just dreamt it up. It doesn't really matter. It's a hypothesis. I'm going to test it to see if it is accurate or not. So I'll wait for the price of petrol to rise. And when the price of petrol rises, less petrol should be sold. Now, I can test my hypothesis. If I could get statistics, numbers, say how much petrol was sold before the price rise, how much was the price rise? How much petrol was sold after the price rise? And I could now work out the implications of the, the change in price for petrol. The problem is, and I've mentioned this in another video, this every time bit. Uh, how do we know it happens every time? We don't. Again, we generalize. We will say, okay, every time, every time, every time the price of petrol rises, less petrol is sold. But you know very well that may not be the case. It may be sometimes it happens, but perhaps not all the time. So we have to bear that in mind. Don't do anything about it. Just, just bear it in mind. It's a possibility. Which takes us to the deductive method. Now here we could say all A is B. So all A is B, whatever that is. Every time the price of petrol rises, less petrol is sold. All A, every time, all. Price of petrol, A, less petrol is sold, B. So we have a testable statement. It's not a, a dream or a fantasy or something vague. This is actually a testable statement. We can get data and test it. We have the problem of every time, of all. All and every time are doing the same job here. So the price of petrol rises, A, Less petrol is sold as B, and we've got every time. So we're using symbols here. We're using letters to represent an argument, to represent a piece of reasoning. And that's all we're doing. That's, that's where the A and the B comes from. There's nothing to be scared about in terms of A and B. Now go back to it. All A is B, and now let's say we're given A. If we say, okay, A, A applies, therefore B. Now we're using, we're starting to use logical thinking. We're starting to cast this in a way that logicians might do. So we're, we're moving along here using symbols instead of words. So every time... Uh, sorry, every time there is um, a big black cloud in the sky, it rains. All right. There is a big black cloud in the sky at the moment. So, if the big black cloud in the sky exists, therefore it's going to rain. Because that's what our logic tells us.
we'll take away the clouds and the rain and just look at this one. Every time the price of ice cream increases, less ice cream is sold. The price of ice cream has just increased, therefore less ice cream is sold. So we're using logical reasoning to get an insight into economic relationships. For those of you who are interested, this is the basis of logic as developed by Aristotle. Um, so it goes back a long way. Um, we're not going to use this uh, in a very sophisticated manner. We're just going to use the bits that we need in economics to get an insight into economics. So we're not going to be working on logic. That's a separate subject. But we are using this type of thinking to, to give us an insight into economics. The first term here, and I've dealt with this in another video, but the first term here, all A is B, that's the major premise, we call it. And then we have a minor premise, and then we have a conclusion. The all A is B, how we know all A is B is by induction. We observe one, we observe it again, and we observe it again, and we observe it so many times we think all. We make that big jump. We've observed it 20 times, and then suddenly we say all. And you could criticize this and say, well, that's not fair. It's not quite right. It's just going too far. But we all do it. Every time we see a big black cloud in the sky, we think it's going to rain. Um, we may think it's going to rain, I should say. Uh, so that's our hypothesis. And then we see a big black cloud and we deduce it's going to rain. And then we can test it. Does it rain or not? If it doesn't rain, we just tested a hypothesis. If it rains, it adds more evidence to the, the major premise that every time we see a cloud, big black cloud, it's going to rain. We're using this type of logical thinking. And that's all we, we need to do in this one. It really is a recap of a previous video, but well worth looking at. Okay, so let's leave it there. And thank you for watching.